Hello everyone, in this lecture we are continuing with our study on forward kinematics and we're going to introduce a powerful method for deriving this called the denovit hartenberg parameters. So in the previous lecture we learnt that we can concatenate transformation matrices between joint frames to determine the end effect of pose. So we can multiply all the transforms from frame zero upward through our forwards kinematic chain to the end effector of the robot. And so this is just a product of all the transforms from joint J minus one to J. And we just need to describe this transform J minus one to J as a function of simple geometry. Okay, so Kismet has joined me here to help describe denovit hartenberg parameters. So the denovit hartenberg parameters are a really powerful tool for describing forward kinematics. And what this says is the transform between any two reference frames on a serial link chain can be described with a minimum number of four parameters. Right? So we have a minimum number of four parameters applied in sequence. We rotate about the z-axis by theta. So in our first transform, we have a rotation about z by theta. We translate about the z-axis by d. So in our second transform, we replace the z component with a variable d in the translation vector. The third one, we translate across x by a variable a. So in our third transform, the x translation component is given by a and then lastly we rotate about the x axis by alpha so in our last transform we have rotation about x by an angle alpha so for our joint frame j minus 1 to j we have the concatenation of all these transforms so first a rotation about z by theta a translation about z by d, a translation about x by a, and a rotation about x by alpha. And therefore, to get the forward kinematics from frame 0 to frame n, then we just multiply all of these together. So we have j minus 1 to j for every joint j up to n joints, and we multiply all of these together. So here is a nice little animation showing what it looks like. We rotate about Z, translate about Z, translate about X, and then rotate about X. So why do we use the DH parameters? Well, firstly, it's the minimum number of parameters needed to describe forward kinematics. So we could define any kind of transformation matrix between frames, but DH parameters are the most efficient. It also allows us to use universal nomenclature. So knowing the DH parameters gives complete knowledge of the kinematics of a robot. And also it's easily understood by anyone. And then it's also computationally efficient for the differential kinematics and dynamics. So we need to minimize the number of calculations for high frequency feedback control. So even though we have super powerful computers, this can still add up, especially when we have lots of sensors, lots of vision processing, really complex robot structures. We really need to minimize the computational cost for our robot control. And consider that electricity travels 3000 kilometers in 0 0.01 seconds at 100 hertz. So this is a huge distance in such a small amount of time. So there are rules for applying DH parameters. The first is that we actuate about the Z axis. So for a revolute joint, we just rotate about Z like shown. So in our first transform, if we have a revolute joint, we replace theta with Q. And if we have a prismatic joint, we translate about Z. So our second transform, we replace the Z component with Q. Right, so we only actuate about Z. Second, the axis for Z J minus one is perpendicular to and intersects the axis for X of frame J. So as you can see in the diagram here, these two, two axes projected will intersect and they're at 90 degrees to each other. Lastly, we don't need to define 
the y-axis. This is just solved implicitly. So the y-axis will just be the cross product of z and x. Right, so here are some tips for dh parameters. Firstly, the joint frame does not need to physically coincide with the actual joint. It only needs to align with the axis of actuation. So in this depiction here, we can see that the physical joint might be up here, but the frame of reference for this joint can be anywhere along this axis. Right? It could be anywhere here. It doesn't need to be on the actual joint. Second, the robot arm can be arranged in any configuration that suits the DH parameters. So the robot configuration should suit the DH parameters, not the other way around. So we can put this joint here in any location around its previous joint, but we just pick the one that suits the DH parameter uh, configuration, and that would be in this location here. Right, so to get a forward kinematics at a particular joint configuration, Q, we just substitute the joint value in the Z comp component of the transformation chain. So the transform from frame J minus 1 to J, if we have a revolute joint, we just substitute the rotation about Z with the joint variable Q here. And for a prismatic joint, we substitute the translation component about Z with our joint variable Q. Now, alternative sequences can be used for DH parameters, and this is one that I made up, so it might be not 100% accurate, but it illustrates the point. So I had uh, D theta alpha A, um, but the important point is that we must use the same sequence. Matrices are not commutative, and so use the same sequence for all joints. So different textbooks will give different combinations of DH parameters. You must use the same one and specify which ones you have used. So let's return to our 3DOF manipulator that we looked at for the forward kinematics in the previous lecture. So the DH parameters from frame 0 to 1 is first given by a rotation about the Z axis by Q1. So this is our variable Q1 for this joint and we're rotating about the Z axis. So our first transform will be given by this matrix here. And then we want to move up the Z axis. So to get to the next frame, we have to move up by L1 the distance of this link length here. Then the next one will be a translation about x by a, but you can see that there is no offset between these joints, and so a will be zero. And lastly, we have to rotate about the x-axis by alpha. So to get this z-axis here to align with this z-axis here, we rotate about x by pi on 2. Now, we want to get from frame 1 to 2. So again, we have a revolute joint, and we rotate about the z-axis. So this is our variable q2 about the z-axis z1. So we just substitute q2 into a Z rotation matrix. Then the next would be a translation about the Z axis, but you can see that these are not offset in Z, so therefore we have zero. Then we have a translation about X. So to get from here to here, we translate by the link length L2. Then the last would be a rotation about x by alpha, but you can see that these two frames are already in alignment. And so therefore, we have zero rotation, which will give the identity matrix. Then lastly, we go from frame two to three. And so again, we rotate about z here, q3, and therefore we substitute q3 
as our variable theta. We translate across the z-axis by d3, but again, because these are not offset in z, therefore this is 0. The next will be a translation across x by a, and so we have to move along the x-axis, and this is just the link length L3 for the x component. And then lastly will be a rotation by alpha about the x-axis, but again, these frames are already in alignment, so this alpha will be zero, which gives the identity matrix for a rotation about zero. Right, so therefore we have solved all the transforms from j minus 1 to j of our three link manipulator. So let's consider this 3 dot manipulator with a prismatic joint. So from frame 0 to 1, it's the same. We have rotation about the z-axis by q1, translation to up z by l1. We don't need to translate about x, so this will be a 0. And then we have to rotate by pi on 2 to get the two frames in alignment. And note that for this case, frame 2 is coincident with frame 1. So we had before I described that the frame of reference for a joint does not need to be located on the physical axis. And therefore, to perform the DH parameters on this type of structure, the frame for this joint here must be located down here, coincident. Otherwise, the DH parameters won't work. And this is fine. It still works out mathematically. So, 1 to 2. So, we're at frame 1, and we're going to frame 2, and they're in the same location. Again, Q2 about Z1. They are coincident. So, we have no translation about Z, and no translation about x. But now we need to rotate back by pi on 2 to get this z-axis pointing up. So negative pi on 2 to cancel out this pi on 2 here. And since frame 2 is not located on joint 3, right, so this frame is not up here where the physical origin of the joint would be, we need to add the link offset for the z-translation. So, we start with a rotation about z, but we don't need to rotate about z, so this will be 0. And we translate across z by L2 plus Q3 to get from here to here, or more importantly, here to here. And then we don't need to move about the x-axis because they're in alignment, so that's zero. And again, we don't need to rotate about x anymore either because these frames are now oriented in the same way. So this will be zero. So this would be an example of how to perform the forward kinematics with DH parameters where we have some sort of annoying kinematic structure like so. Uh, so therefore, frame one and two are coincident and we account for this offset between frames with our DH parameters here. So I'm going to give you some common joint-to-joint -joint transforms that I have seen in my limited experience. So the first would be exactly what we saw in the previous example. So we have joint frames that are coincident. So when these two frame, these two joints are perpendicular, we need to specify this joint frame down here at the same point as the previous one, j minus 1. And therefore, we have a rotation about z by q, <coughs> no translations at all, and we just do a plus minus, plus minus pi on 2 to get the z-axis of j pointing up. <coughs> 
the next would be this kind of arrangement. So we have Z rotation with Q, uh, translation up Z by the link length here, uh, no translation about X because they're in alignment, and then we have to rotate about pi on two to get the Z axis pointing this way, which is orthogonal to this one. And lastly, this really simple arrangement. So again, a rotation about the Z axis by Q. Uh, we have no offset in the Z axis, so this is zero. We translate across X by the link length L here. And then again, because these frames have the same orientation, we don't need to rotate about X, so that's zero. Right, so let's summarize what we learned about DH parameters. The forward kinematics can be calculated by multiplying transforms between joint frames. So to get the transform from frame zero, usually the base frame, to frame n, the end effector of the robot, we just multiply all the individual transforms between joints. The DH parameters give a minimum number of four parameters applied in the same sequence to get the transform from frame j minus one to frame j. So for a revolute joint, we replace the rotation about Z with our joint variable Q. For a prismatic joint, we replace the translation about Z with our joint variable Q. And again, these transforms must be applied in sequence. And the individual parameters within this sequence are first a rotation about Z by theta, a translation about Z by D, then third, a translation about X by A, and lastly, we rotate about X by alpha.